Ready? <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. Super happy to be here with you today. And so let's get started. Uh, I'm Philippe Aubert Gauthier. I'm professor at Ecole des Arts Visuels et Médiatiques in Quebec, Canada, and I teach Blender every year, which is great. And I'm also the um, Associate Director of Artistic Research of the Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Music, Media, and Technology. And today I am also with Mathieu. Hi. Okay, that's it, good. Let's go, let's jump in. So <laughs> you took me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, so today we're gonna talk about this kind of project that we start together, the Presbyopic Camera and the Myopic Object. Quite a challenging title. Uh, the presentation is also including Tania St. Pierre because I will present some of our dual work in that uh, direction. So let's jump in. This is actually the version of Blender when I started to use Blender. So I think it was in around 2009, probably version 2. Dot something. So it's funny because it means like. It's nearly 14 years, but it's just to make things clear. We don't define ourselves like animators or real 3D artists. We're really more coming from the world of visual and digital art. So it's kind of a little bit uh, different, I would say. So the meaning of this is that you have to know that we work in a very specific context in the visual and digital arts, uh, contemporary arts also. So typically, the place where we are presenting the outputs of our work is mostly art space, gallery space, artist-run center, things like that. So we have no pretension at all. Let's play with that a little bit. So one of the characteristics sorry, of uh, what we do is we use 3D and Blender always with the, uh, in relation with the material and physical world. So what we are doing is typically installations, print, 2D or 3D, objects, video, and even mockups. And one of the driving questions that we all have is relation between art, science, and technology, and all the cultural, social, and even historical aspect of all these technology. And we will play with you today with these kind of uh, topics. So this is the plan for today. Very uh, quickly, we will just present some past work, first Mathieu and then uh, our duo. And then I will introduce the project, the background, the question and research hypothesis, and uh, we provide a super short conclusion. So without further ado, it's your turn. Thank you. So my name is Mathieu Latulip, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist from uh, Montreal. And I do modelization, but uh, I do uh, also like real modelization like in it's a real gallery, and it's a real uh, mock-up. So my goal is more like to build world. So it could be in digital model modelization or in uh, physical modelization. And I like to do installation that I put both of them. And my goal is to uh, question like the way we inhabit the world and the way we live together. So, and I like to uh, to makes them like to create world. So also, I like to uh, question uh, the art viz, like the architectural uh, visualization, um, more in a reflexive way. Like I like to think about the thing that sometimes it's a bit cliche or code of representation. So I like to put uh, sunset, uh, a bunch of birds, I don't know if you ever noticed, but in uh, Archviz, you have a lot of birds, maybe more than in the real life. And it's sometimes when you keep real, your eyes on it, you, you realize that because it's like, you know, like always the same model. And I, I want to say thank you to be here and also like because I'm really happy to, that I learned Blender because uh, I think we have to realize that a uh, few years uh, before, like I had to go really to, I was planning to go to a desert to take a picture, to have, to make a desert. But now I can stay in my living room and do like dunes, uh, every stuff that you can find in a desert. And I don't stay, I don't move. I can do bunch of them. I still put some cream, but it's just like, for the coconut uh, smell of it. And uh, yeah, speaking of dessert, uh, I started to work more like uh, recently with Blender. I'm not a long time user, as you can see. And uh, I work 
I want to do a bunch of uh, fake, uh, fictive, fictional world, and I also started a, a website, and I see it more as a piece of art than a portfolio website. And so I started to build like kind of crazy world, uh, sometimes serious, sometimes more funny world. And uh, yeah, it, I started with a, a, a space that is a data city or smart city, and it collapsed because like hackers act the uh, climatization, so it put like really like. Uh, really frozen in some space, really cold, and super warm in other place. And with the QR code, it's really funny because you can do also like a 3D model, and uh, when you watch your screen, you have like another model with your phone, and we don't have time to try this one. And of course, like I like to, all the perspective you can have like to, when you want to build a world, like the 3D, it's just like I show like how you can also build world without me, me, maybe not doing animation. And yeah, it's just more a zoom in. It's not crazy high uh, skill of modernization. But even I think with mid-journey and everything, I think I will go maybe less photorealistic, like to really maybe just print it super, uh, just the line and do watercolor. But I bought watercolor and never opened the tube, so. And so, yeah, so I see like a, a big horizon of things that you can do with Blender, and it's really crazy, awesome uh, software. And also, I think for the website I'm building, I like, I'm, I'm happy to be here, because uh, I think I will join also other artists that are doing kind of crazy world or fictional world. And I started to work also like with virtual tour, but I do uh, like the 360 panoramic uh, that you just upload, and it's really crazy way to easy, super easy. You have a bunch of websites that you can use to do that, and you can put iRes like uh, picture. So yeah, so um, just some image like Maram Sak is because like they, they was hack. And now I'm a, a PhD uh, at uh, UCAM, and I work with Philippe Aubert, and it's just like a funny slide to make the transition. Thanks. Yeah, it's the transition slide, but it's a slide that kind of introduced the thing we'll present at the end. It's about the point of view, because one of the really funny thing, and it was related to a talk this morning, is that we still have the point of view in a computer, which is kind of a total uh, historical construct. So let's jump in for uh, quick presentation of our duo work, some, six, some of the selected work. First one is something is happening, nothing very special in terms of 3D, it's just an empty space. But we were interested in uh, a notion called as verisimilitude. If you didn't hear about that, I suggest you can have a look. It's roughly this idea that because of CGI, we tend to do hyper details, like beyond realism somehow. Uh, this was made like many years ago. Very basic print on paper, uh, 30,000 pixels by 15,000. But uh, if you take a close look as a people in a museum, you will see, oh, the white wall is actually modeled in terms of the, by the way, it's 100% Blender. We actually modelize kind of just the painting texture. Nothing special, nothing complicated, but it was display with uh, high resolution. And it was, of course, higher resolution than typical video screen. So it's an exhibition, and we were playing with this idea of using new technology, CGI, to represent former image technology studio lamps in a studio in a kind of a romantic uh, you know, perspective of older technology going in the dust. And we were modeling dust and tiny, tiny things on the printing, printing, but very super basic modeling. Another project in this direction we also made is called Phantom Production. It's a video diptych. You can see it as an outdoor installation. Roughly, we were interested in how cameras, cameraman's movement can act of, uh, as marker of realism in CGI. We had a very nice also presentation here this morning about that. Very nice example. So we have been doing our camera tracking, but the result is actually a video diptych. What I mean by that is really that on the left, this is a presentation in a festival, you had the real shooting, super basic, empty space, abandoned. And on the right, you would have the CGI, that, and the two were just in sync in terms of camera movement. That's it. Nothing more than that. 
just some quick, uh, sorry for the low res, these are kind of bad JPEG, wrong here, but anyway, it gives you an idea of kind of the aesthetics, very simple image because we wanted to focus on the movement as marker of realism. The most recent, not the most, but nearly the most recent thing we have been doing together with Tanya is Intertip, which is a, a work about uh, 3D printing, but we wanted to think about 3D print in the history of print. So it's an exhibition again with 3D prints and prints, and here you see the uh, on the left, the four little paper, they were actually fake simulated press engraving, all done with Bender, of course. And we had real 3D print also, of course. And this is an example of a fake engraving plate in 3D print. I know I should have been able to cut the little thing, but it was to actually leave it obvious as a 3D print. And it's so you, if you get a close up, you would see the groove from the metal plate. And maybe have you seen that the plate is a little bit curved? Because in the past, when you had to press with metal plates, after a while, they would be bending, and then they have to throw it away. So all the piece in this installation was including historical reference, hidden somehow of the glitch related to the history of print. And so in the end, we had this kind of fake uh, print with the embossing caused by the plate. And also, if you would zoom in, I don't know if you see it here, but we were, we were simulating the embossing 3D, of course, of the line getting in the paper. And actually, these things that were printed like that size, like super small, they really like a, a real uh, engraved thing. And the light was coming from the top, so we kind of included that in the simulation. One again, and once again, 100% Blender. And last week, we have been inaugurating our most uh, recent piece. And this is a picture, not CGI. So it's a Grand Théâtre de Québec, which is a big theater in Quebec City, Canada. And we started with a paper collage by Tania Saint-Pierre. She has been working like for years based on the interior design magazine. So it's all part of interior design, but combined with nature element, because she noticed that in the 80s, these magazines were including like super strong natural element like big fireplace, big bath, and so on. And we kind of translated this idea of collage into a 3D uh, creation. It's a video installation of 75 minutes, all based on the paper collage. Sometimes they are included, but sometimes they are kind of reenacted in 3D. So just some example here. And uh, these are cell phone picture from last week. So it was presented, it's a four uh, level high uh, video projection. So we're super excited. It will be there for six months if you pass through Quebec with a soundtrack also, which was modular synthesis controlled by the color level of the video as a post treatment. So if you want to know more, we have, of course, a website. So now I think um, pretty good. So about the project that we're starting together, it's kind of all based uh, on that. And it's something we want to share with you maybe to have some feedback or ideas. About the background, I will start with something uh, coming from science and technology studies, which is called culture embedded in technology, which is, if you don't know about, I think we should all read about that. It's the idea that whatever you do, if you're a developer, you live in a given culture, so your code will be influenced by your own culture. So whatever you do, cars, motorcycles, if you create technology, part of the uh, your own culture will be manifest through your choice. So it's very important for us to start with that. Another concept coming from science and technology studies is the social construction of technology. Any technology have users, then you have an emerging behavior, social or individual or whatever. Sometimes it's not planned in the technological development. It appears after. A few examples include, uh, include iPod battle. It, I think it was not part of the plan for uh, Apple. Any things like that. So there's plenty of these things. So the thing today that we want to share, and it's the starting point of the project, is that Blender is another technology, and it's not neutral. Let's play with that. So another thing that we input for the project is the idea that all CGI is, of course, heavily relying on mathematics, which is actually a copy somehow of the history of painting, optics, geometry. This is all embedded in the code. Every time I press render, I'm so excited to kind of reenact. You know, it's like 400 years. <clears throat> 400? Maybe 500, uh, sorry, maybe 500 years of painting and history that we convocate. And this is just an example from the book. Of course, projective geometry being one of the most you know, obvious example. Another super strong uh, influence for this project is Hubert uh, Damisch, who wrote about the origin of perspective. But he, he shows that it's actually a plural history of perspective. Lots of many experiments, 
lot of mathematical theorems all combined together step by step very slowly toward the end of the perspective. So it's uh, something. One of the things from the history of perspective which drive the project that I will slowly introduce is the Brunelleschi experiment. Maybe you're familiar with that. It's the idea of the painter was having a painting with a little hole, so he could place a mirror, take a look at the architecture the, without the mirror, and then put the mirror, compare with the painting, and do his painting to fit the architecture. And then you have all the emergence of vanishing point, perspective, and so on. And if you take a look at the history of perspective, there's plenty of other examples. And for instance, here we have Durer, uh, which is drawing a lute using a, a string, a little door opening and closing. So a lot of technical experiment and mathematics and concept that are all embedded in our software, which I find very exciting. Anyway, if you're interested, you can go like forever in perspective history to see how much it is based on that. So. What about that? So our starting, starting hypothesis then is that there's at least two elements of history of painting embedded in any, any computer, uh, sorry, uh, CGI uh, software like Blender. Of course, projective geometry and ray tracing for all the shadings. So what about that? What do we do with that? Let's think about this. And our project, the question is based on media remediation. I don't know if you know that expression. It's this idea that often a new technology will emulate part of the former one. I think that the photorealism is the best example to make a real CGI image. It should look like old photographic Polaroid. You know all about that. So this is media remediation. So CGI somehow recreated camera and painting. And the funny thing is, why? You know, it's a computer. We could do a funny, non-existing camera. So that's the goal with the project. We want to explore new point of view, but we don't necessarily want to go abstract because we could do processing or whatever. No, which still, we want to use CGI to do other point of view. So the goal is to create image that would capture a non-human or non-retinal or non-camera based point of view. I will call it point of view for now, just so, so it's shorter, but you understand that we don't know yet. The question then would be how other things would perceive light and create image based on that and art, of course. So a few hypotheses how to do that. We think about baking, because it's one of the ways to compute light, not at the point of view. Maybe fake baking, camera with baking something. Shading acts, maybe lens hacking. I've been surprised in one of my course, a student made a very funny experiment with Blender. He wanted to know if it was able to simulate uh, light pipes, optic fiber. And he made a huge amount of 10,000 fiber, uh, optic fiber to bend a shadow, and it actually worked straight. So this is kind of playing with optics, maybe. And maybe accessing more render hacks and tweaks. I dream of being able to take Blender or anything else, say, oh, please make the bend, the rays, just curve a little bit, just for fun, you know, these kinds of tweaks. So we have some prelim preliminary tests to share with you today. And we're kind of here today to have any feedback or ideas and share about that. So one of the inspiration was this image from a project I shown Earlier, it's just a baking of shadows on an object. But it's a little bit this idea of the object being a myopic, for instance. And a few other examples. It's mostly principal example, because it's really a project that we start now. A bunch of object over a plane. And if you do the baking of on the plane, you will have this image. But this is the inverted one, by the way. And then you say, you know, it's a photogram. I don't know if you know photogram. You take a photo paper, you put objects on it, you expose light, and then you have this kind of image. But you see that touching objects are in focus, and anything uh, everywhere is out of focus. So maybe playing with that is one avenue. One of the other possible avenues is to really go into shader and geometry node and use and play and tweak parameters from ray tracing or even develop custom code, which is one possibility. And in the end, something that we have to decide is how we will present this. And we're going back to your image, Matsur. So I think that the piece will be something like on the left, you have an image, so you understand the scene. And then using hotspot, maybe VR navigation, you could see the light as perceived by an object or something. So this is kind of a joke image, but it illustrates the concept. So the objective in the end, if I have to make it short, we want to do image inspired from the history of perspective. And finally, I think we'll go for uchronic perspective. What I mean by that is, imagine if at Brunelleschi uh, time, you know, the mirror and the painter, a different experiment setup would have been existing. And then a change in history would have been happened. So I think we will imagine fake perspective device that would have been existing in the past 
and play a little bit with that to create image. But we can't want to conceptually transfer this to kind of a fictitious CGI paradigm. I think that's the plan, roughly. So we should work on that like for the next two years, by the way. So super quick conclusion. I think we're on time. Yes. So CGI, I hope that everybody leave today with this thing in your mind. It's a medium with a cultural significance and also with meaning. So it's not neutral. So the future for the project is really just to create a bunch of images, objects, probably even installation. We are like super open about this idea of light perception by something different than a point in space, something different from our uh, eyes. Open question for now. We don't know exactly what we'll be modeling. That's kind of a big problem. And maybe in a sci-fi world, like we will be here, uh, but doing a really different uh, conference. We know. We don't know yet. But one thing we know is that it will be probably a reference to hysterical complement. So the other goal also, of course, is to, to do this only and only with uh, Blender. And that's kind of that's it. Thank you so much. Very great Thank event. Thank you, everybody, for the teams and everything. <laughs>